So welcome back to my youtube channel today i will show you how to use the arrow labeling tool in image j with the arrow labeling tool you can point at different location within your image and this can uh, easily get the attention of the person you are showing your data to or doing a presentation if you are a first time user, you need to go to the internet and search for the arrow tool in image J. This window will open up and you need to drag this arrow tool jar into your image software and it will automatically then load the, the tool for you. So in, when this is done, you need to ensure that your image is in uh, 8-bit uh, um, it's converted to 8-bit and once you've done that you can match the image sample together like here I've matched my fluorescence channel together with my bright field channel that's why I'm having this uh, having this matched channel showing So now, when you need to use the arrow, you need to click on this icon here and select your arrow labeling tool. When you do that, this window, these uh, small icons will be shown on your images software and you can click on the one that is showing this arrow indicator and go to set drawing location. So if you want to point at this small object here, We'll drag the navigator to the place and because it's a single slice we we'll say okay if you have more than 20 slices you can select from slice 1 to 20 but for me I have just a single slice here then this window will open up with this window you are able to select the arrow in different orientation either pointing from the side diagonally from the bottom or from the top it is essential that you look closely on this uh, black window within the panel you can see that the arrow will show you how it's pointing at the object sometimes if you choose a particular location it could be masking the object you want to display so it's best to choose the one that points at the location without blocking the view and it's possible to change the length of the arrow head the width of it the tail and the width of the tail once you've selected the type you want, so imagine let's choose red, you click apply. When you click on apply, the software will automatically convert your image to a 24-bit uh, um, colored image. That's okay. Just click on okay. And you can see we have our red arrow pointing at this small object. So if you want to point at this other small object here, we can see that it's almost as small as the other one here. We could also just pick our arrow tool again and draw on it. And this time, because it's, a, it's at this location, we might want to point in a different uh, uh, orientation. And since the size is almost similar to the second one, we can still use red and click apply. So imagine now we want to click on something bigger than the sizes that we have before. We can just drag our navigation tool, navigation tool and select the arrow drawing location. So here. And because I might want to talk about these bigger objects in a different um, with a different explanation, I'm, I'm going to select a uh, um, cyan color and let it point from the top this time around and there now we can see that we have two different color and if we are interested in pointing at something else in our image let's for instance this clustered uh, object we can decide to use a white color and let it point from a different angle you see that's better than pointing from here this is better and we click apply and just like that so in, if you want to reuse this white arrow location you can decide to save the arrow uh, location 
but I don't save them because I prefer to choose the location I'm pointing to at a different time. And now all we are left to do is to set the scale bar. It's always important to have a scale bar to confocal images. It gives your audience the, uh, the idea of the, of the size of the image you are displaying. So I'm going to be choosing lower right there. And you can see that the scale bar is really thin. I like to have a very thick scale bar, but not the one overshadowing my sample. And I will hide the text. And now you can save your image as whatever file format you like. I usually use a JPEG. I like working with JPEG. The quality is always amazing. And now we can close our images software. I'm not going to save any of this. I've saved what I'm interested in. So don't save, don't save. And now we can open the image that we just annotate. Here you can see your various color of arrow. And now if I'm talking that, oh yes, the, the smaller objects, they are the one indicated with a red arrow. It's easy for my audience to quickly follow when I say the smaller object. So I hope you find this tutorial useful. If you enjoy watching this tutorial, please click the thumb up button and please remember to subscribe to my channel. Until then, bye.